Hey there, students and families. The purpose of this video is to show you and your student how they can make uh, corrections to our last writing summative grade. Our last writing summative grade um, was a persuasive speech that your student wrote. Um, and so persuasive speeches are a type of opinion writing. And we have been studying this unit for now a couple of months. So it started with writing collections and writing reviews. And ultimately, we are writing persuasive speeches. So your student um, has recently wrote another persuasive speech about littering. And so um, we've worked on this one together, whole group to kind of practice that. So hopefully going back and making these corrections this week, your student can use the knowledge um, that we talked about this past week in class to help them with that. Um, so this um, persuasive speech, um, again, is not the littering, um, littering being a huge problem um, speech that we wrote together as a class, but it's the one that they wrote uh, pre previously um, before that. Um, so it could be a wide ar array of topics. They could have written about school uniforms or having better school lunches. Um, your student got to choose the topic in which they wanted to write about and in the hopes that they would be able to write a lot about that topic and be really passionate about it. So I just kind of want to show you what was expected when your student created that essay and some of the mentor examples and things that we talked about and discussed in class and where resources can be found found as they go to make these corrections. All right, so I'm going to show you a mentor example that we studied in class. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It is posted on Canvas if you would like to go back and take a look at the entire text. But I just want to point out a couple of key features. So you can see right off the bat by looking at it. Now, we annotated this together as a class. Um, so there's a lot of notes and things on it. But you can already kind of see that the piece is rather lengthy, um, that this author had really elaborated on each of their reasons and had a clear introduction and conclusion. So one thing that we're looking for really clearly in our introduction um, is a hook. How are we getting our reader interested in what we're saying? And so many writers started this off with some sort of question. Now that we know that that's not the only way to start an introduction, but this was kind of one of our first strategies that we started. Um, this particular author started with a little personal story. All right, but also what we're looking for is that clear, bold opinion. This writer is writing about wanting football at recess. And so they very clearly state that we should have football at recess. So on top of having a hook uh, in their introduction, all right, also having that bold opinion. All right, now that's the, not the only piece of a persuasive speech. We also have to have reasons that prove why having recess at football would, or I'm sorry, football at recess would be beneficial. All right, and so you can see that this reader included three clear reasons. Now, our requirement for class is two, all right, but if your writer would also like to include a third one, that's fantastic also. They can include that third reason, all right, but you can see that they use clear transition words to show their reasons. For example, the first reason why we should have football is because it is good exercise, and then this writer went on to elaborate and to show how having football at recess is good exercise. Another reason we should have football is because everyone can play football. And then they went on to give examples to show how their dog can play, how their sister can play football. Okay, so depending on what your student is writing about will depend on the kind of examples that they can give. But we've talked about using transition words like, for example, or one time to kind of add in those mini stories and those examples. All right, we've also talked about how in class that each of our paragraphs should be about four sentences long. We have our clear reason and then we we have our elaboration of about three sentences to add on those examples and those mini stories to back up and prove each of those reasons. And then our conclusion, all right, so for this type of writing that we're doing, our conclusions can include a couple of different things, possible solutions to the problem, um, and then also reminding our reader about why this is an important issue or an important topic. <coughs> All right, so that's kind of what that this writer did. They reminded us of what they were talking about, wanting football at recess and the benefits of having it and wrapping up um, everything, kind of restating that opinion. Okay, so you can see that it's very clear and organized. All right, and so we've talked about this a lot in class also. So some of the big things that I noticed just across the board for students that we struggle with 
is just the elaboration piece. Um, they can come up with reasons, all right, but they struggle with adding on. So using those transition words of one time, for instance, for example, really helps students elaborate. They also have resources in their writing folder in the writing binder um, that can help them add on a um, list of transition words in addition to the things that are posted on Canvas. So I'll take a moment and I'll show you where you can find the things that are posted on Canvas. So when your student logs onto Canvas, and this is where they would um, see all of their different classes, all right, if they were to go to Miss Buchanan, and then click on writing, of course, this is where they get their lesson for the day, but if they go down to this little resource button, there's a lot of great things that are here that I post that we use in class that they can come back and look at any time. So you click on resources and then for this particular uh, persuasive speech, you would want to click on writing unit two and you can scroll down and you can see there's lots of different resources. So there's checklists that your students should have a hard copy of as well in their writing binders. Okay, but here's some really helpful things like sentence stems to help add on. So there are transition words for reasons, uh, one time, for example, in addition to help them kind of get that structure of adding on. Okay, here's some more sentence stems here as well. This is a problem because, okay. And then you can also see that there is a copy of the persuasive speech that we just took a look at all together. So that's posted there and they can kind of have that up as they're working on their writing. Um, in addition, we have recently talked about other ways to start their introduction, like trying a bada bing or onomatopoeia or dialogue. Okay. So these are resources that they can also use to help them as they make corrections to this piece of writing. So let's talk about where your student would go in order to make these corrections. So your student would need to go into Google Classroom now, and this is from a couple of weeks ago, so they would need to scroll down and find week three, the persuasive speech final copy. So I want to briefly just kind of show you what it was that I was looking for when it came to this writing. It's a lot of the same things that we talked about when we looked here at this speech. Okay, so an introduction. How do they hook their reader in? Getting, getting their reader interested. We shouldn't just state our opinion. We should do something Thing in order to get them interested in our writing. And we've talked a lot, a lot about that in class. Okay. Having that clear opinion. All right. We should have football at recess. All right. Having it very clearly stated in the opinion, using transition words, having strong reasons. Okay. And so when I'm talking about reasons, I'm not just talking about the reasons themselves. This also includes the elaboration, the examples, comparisons, maybe that they're making. All right, the organization, all right? We should also see clear paragraphs. This helps the reader or the audience know where their introduction is, where their reasons are, where their conclusion is, okay? So having that clear organization and not having awkward spacing and lines and gaps, okay? That's a part of the writing process as well, okay? In addition to spelling and punctuation and grammar, your student should be writing in complete sentences. Like I said, each paragraph should be about four sentences long, all right, we should have punctuation scattered throughout and we've talked about punctuation serves a purpose. We can't just throw it in there randomly. It serves a purpose. Okay, so that's what uh, your student was originally graded on. Okay, so when your student finds this assignment, I'm in teacher view, so unfortunately I can't show you what a true student view looks like, but when they click on view assignment, it will make the assignment bigger and over to the side, you should be able to see your students grade, open up the rubric to see what they miss points on in addition to feedback. I let students know what they did well and then things that they should be focusing on um, the next time that they write a opinion piece like this and what they could be focusing on in their correction. So please make sure that you take a look at that feedback. All right, I might've said something about working on an introduction or adding an elaboration. It might've been something about run on sentences in their writing. So to just kind of guide them and let them know what it is that they need to be working on will definitely be in that comment section. Okay, of course, if you ever have any questions about this, email me, we could set up a private one-on-one -on -one Zoom and we can work on those corrections. Okay, so the, making sure that you click on view assignment. Okay, but let's talk specifically about how students can make corrections. So when they make corrections, they can click on their copy of the assignment 
Now, this is going to be blank because this is a, the template. So, of course, you'll see your students writing. Okay. So, if it's something like paragraphs or adding in punctuation, um, making sure that you're hitting those spacing. All right. I'm going to be able to go back and look at the different versions of the text. So, I'll be able to see if they added in that spacing and if they added in punctuation, things like that. But something that's really helpful is that when they, if they're adding in elaboration or adding in an introduction, making that text in red so I can tell what it is that they've added just by first glance. So they can do this by going up here to text color, selecting text color and putting it in red. All right, and type corrections here. Okay, and you can see that the text is in red. So that would just be really helpful to see what it is that they're adding on right off the bat. Um, yeah, so I hope that this has been helpful in kind of showing you what is expected, what fourth grade level writing looks like, and how your student can make corrections. So like I said, um, students are welcome to email me. Um, we could set a, a private like Zoom to kind of talk about their writing. Overall, I've seen a lot of improvement in writing over the past few weeks, but there's just a few things, especially that elaboration piece that some of us are still needing to work on. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, of course, you received this because your students scored below an 80% on their writing assignment. And so because of this, and because it is a summative grade, your student has the opportunity to make corrections. However, that deadline for corrections is going to be Friday. Forgive me, what day is that? Friday the 20th. Yes, Friday the 20th at 4 o'clock p.m. will have to be the cutoff to make these corrections. So your student how has about a week to make those corrections. So I would encourage you guys to sit down with your student, take a look at this video like you are right now. Um, look at those resources that are on um, Canvas and take a look at their writing and the feedback that they received. Um, and I think it'll be really helpful if you and your student work together to work on this piece of writing to see what they've been doing in class, how they've improved, and also how they can continue to get better and grow. So please let me know if you have any questions and I'll be looking to see your students' corrections by Friday. Thanks guys.